When has a gut feeling saved your life? Serious. I almost got kidnapped once. I was like 23 or so. I was walking down my street at a little after dusk. I saw a van approaching a little ahead. No lights on. Didn't think much of it due to the time of day. The van slowed down and almost started creeping. As I was approaching this part of the sidewalk which had a tall solid wall fence to a community. This gave me some pause in that quick moment. For me to keep walking. I'd have to go between the wall and the van. In the little time it took me to take a couple of steps. And as the van was getting close. I noticed that the side door was slowly sliding open. The one thought in my mind was. Why isn't the light turning on inside the van? When you open the door of a vehicle, the light should come on inside it. Unless you deliberately switch that off. And I just ran to the median. I ran in front of the van. And across the street. Because if they're gonna have some use of road kill me. Have at it. But they're not getting me in one glorious piece. Immediately. The van took off like someone lit it on fire. From a slow crawl to full speed. As I looked after it to see the plates. I noticed it had no plates. And still no lights. I called the police. Of course. They sent cars out and didn't find the van. I never had anything like this happen again. And I'm just an ordinary person. So I don't suspect it was targeted. I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Greater than sign. But they are not getting me in one glorious piece. Made me laugh. Great story. Good instincts. Made me laugh too. I had a friend's dad have a talk with us about that once. Saying it's better to be dead than live through what they would have planned. I was driving a friend home late at night. When I was around 21. She lived in a pretty rural area outside of street. Louis. Emma and about a quarter mile from her house. Was an old abandoned farm and farmhouse. I always thought of this place as non-threatening as she told me she and her two sisters would go there as kids, and they found an attic full of cool things, including a trunk of vintage woman's clothing, and old love letters, like something out of movie, anyway, him driving her home, and it's a hot, humid misery summer and we have the windows open as the late night had offered some cool air, we are also singing at the top of our lungs, we pass the abandoned farm, and I drop her off at her house. I wait long enough to see she makes it inside, and I head back out the way I came. Him driving along, and I get to almost where the farm is, and I see two things in the road. My danger meter goes off as I had just driven this road and there was nothing there. I put the windows up, and make sure the doors are locked. I get closer, and I realize the items are to car batteries. Spaced out in the road, which was basically a one lane road, in a way, that I would have to get out, and move them to drive on the road. I immediately knew I wasn't getting out of the car, so I picked the side of the road, that had the less addiction I gunned it. I was driving a little sub, and remember feeling the car run over branches and things in the little ditch. But I just gunned it, and got out of there. All the way home I felt creeped out, and kept checking my rear view mirror. I called my friend the next morning and told her what had happened, and we both agreed it was weird. Shortly after that I moved to another state and didn't think much of it after that. Fast forward to 2 to 3 years later, when I was back visiting my hometown. I randomly ran into my old friend and she ran up to me with wide eyes, and grabbed my arms. She asked me if I remembered what I told her that night. I said yes, and she proceeded to tell me that not too long after that had happened her family was awakened in the middle of the night to someone pounding on their sliding glass door. Her dad went to check and saw two naked, injured women and let them in, and called 911. They had been abducted from street, Louis City, about 40 minutes away, by two men, and brought to the old, abandoned farmhouse where the men tortured and raped them. The women somehow managed to get free, and ran to the only light they could see. The light over my friend's garage. They survived. But the men were never caught. There was evidence the men had been going there for a while. My friend was convinced they had put the batteries in the road, to lure me out of the car. Him just really glad my gut, told me not to, edit, grandma. The same sort of thing happened to me. I live in rural Connecticut and my mom was driving me down dark twisty roads to my friend's house and in the middle of the road was yellow caution tape not police line do not cross tape but just tape that said caution blocking the whole road it had been clearly ripped and tied back together in some places 
My mom examined it, and gunned it in reverse, and got out of there fast. That same night, some woman had gotten out to examine it, and had gotten back in the car to call the police, because she found it suspicious. But not suspicious enough to leave, before calling 911. She was grabbed out of her car, but the people who grabbed her didn't know she had called 911 and the police rolled up as the car was driving away with her in the trunk. They chased them down and she lived, but it was scary. Trust your gut with roadblocks. Always hated the dad scout leader in my area growing up. Just seemed like a real creep. Hated seeing him at community events. Soccer games. Back to school nights. Etc. 10 year old me staged a hissy fit to end all meltdowns with me slamming doors. Crying and breaking shit to avoid being moved from cub scouts, where the moms ran things, to avoid boy scouts. Turns out the scout leader was molesting 3 or 4 of the boys in the troop, and threatening to kill them, if they ever spoke. Justice found him, and has him prison. Glad you avoided that. It honestly breaks my heart, that people would do something like that. We really need male role models for young boys. And for someone to use that position of trust and hurt them so badly in that way, is just sick in a way that's hard for me to process. When I was around 18. I was on a back road with some friends and a girl I didn't know, was driving really fast. Now, I'm a bit of an adrenaline junkie, and I have always enjoyed a calculated risk in the name of a good time. But on this occasion I told her to either slow the duck down, or let me out. I literally had to start screaming at her, before she listened and slowed down. A week later she crashed on that same stretch of road at 90 miles per hour, killing her, and the three passengers of her car. Yikes. My husband is a state trooper, and has always said the wreck that sticks with him the most was a group of 417-18 year olds in a car speeding on the freeway. One of the kids was screaming and begging the driver to let him out. The driver pulled over, and let him out as he and the other two passengers made fun of him for being a pussy, and not wanting to have fun. A couple miles later, the driver flew off an overpass, went over the guardrail, and onto the freeway below. Killing him and the other two passengers instantly, and ejecting one out of the car. Luckily there was no one below, that they fell on too. My husband always remembers that kid who demanded to get out, and how terrified and shaken he was, when he walked up on what happened, and was able to explain, that he was in the car with them just minutes prior, and would have been dead had he not been a pussy. Stories like this is why I hate, being driven by people I don't know well or trust. I get really bad vibes from the car park in work, it's a giant, poorly lit multi-story, and I've seen enough horror films to know I shouldn't be taking it lightly. Whenever I get in, I pay attention to the floors people call the lifter to keep an eye on where they're going. One time a guy got in in front of me and pressed 6, while I was parked on 8. He didn't get out at 6, and was still in the lift as I got to my floor. I leave. He doesn't. So I guess he's remembered he's on another floor. But just before I get to the dark area with all the cars, I turned back. This guy had waited about 30 seconds, therefore held the lift to wait, and silently emerged to follow me. I just stopped and stared him down. He had a deer in the headlights look, and turned straight back to the lift. I have no idea if it saved my life, but it freaked me the duck out. Whenever I get in, I pay attention to the floors people call the lifter to keep an eye on where they're going. I do this too. I also never tell the cab and or Uber driver where I'm actually going. I always get dropped off a few houses or a few blocks away, depending on the area. A great tip I always learned was to call a friend while in a cab slash Uber and you are feeling unsafe. When your gut tells you the vibe is weird just call any friend you know will pick up the phone and tell them, hey I'm almost at the house, I will be there in, time left for drive, so see you soon. My niece who lived alone did this whenever she went to home late at night and it just makes sure that you have someone looking out for you and that your cab driver slash Uber driver has no choice but to deliver you home in said time or someone might get suspicious. I hope I made a little bit of sense. A pain in the lungs when I inhaled. I've never been stabbed. Don't know what it's like, but the pain should have been equal to it, if not worse. It had happened before, years ago. Some hot water in the shower and the pain was gone. 
My wife, then girlfriend, insisted on going to her. I insisted on hot water. I feel like we should go and see a doctor. She had said. I was diagnosed with pulmonary embolism on both lungs. Doctor said one or two more hours and you were gone. So yeah. I owe my wife one. Why have I read like 6 posts about a pulmonary embolism now on this thread? I didn't realize I have one more thing to dread every ache and pain. Glad you're good, and that your wife took your pain seriously. I was utterly carefree when it came to health. Until this incident at the age of 32. Since then. My high school biology teacher's words echo in my mind every now and then. Which I had laughed at at the time. From the biological standpoint. Being alive is an aspect of sheer luck. A single internal organ failure, and one ceases to exist. My now wife and I did the long distance thing in college. And I planned on doing my normal routine to visit her. Leave Chicago land in the morning. Get to her early afternoon on Friday. Well I'm closing my store on Thursday night. And get a feeling I should leave that night. So I said F it. And left that night. A little after lunch on Friday. Tornado sirens go off. I don't think anything of it until I head back home Sunday. And drive through a town about half hour north of her. It got lit up by the tornado. I quickly realize that I had left at my normal time. I will have been smack dab in the middle of tornado. When the tornado that decimated Greensburg, KS came through. My family and I were on our way to my grandparents house. We drove through Greensburg. My mom noticed the storm was getting really bad and decided not to stop until we got to my grandparents house. By the time we got to their house it was on the news that the tornado had leveled the town just minutes after we left the city limits. I don't remember ever seeing a storm quite so ominous. It was nearly totally dark outside but something about that particular storm. I don't know. It was freaky. Edit. Spelling. Supercells can look real ducking sinister. Hey, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.